Hello and welcome back to the Scale Modelling Cafe and welcome back to the Edward Z37 Bumblebee project. So in this project the airframe is all built and we're ready for the fun bit which is the painting and the weathering. So here I'm just laying down the primer. This is Mr. Surfacer 1200 thin with Mr. Leveling Thinner. And just trying to get a nice, even, smooth coat. So I'm spraying it on fairly wet. So relatively high air pressure. It just speed things up a bit. And just trying to get it to go down as smooth as possible. Crossing over at 90 degrees to each other, just to make sure we get a nice, even coat. There we go, that's the airframe finished. All the separate parts, all the flying surfaces were mounted onto cocktail sticks and these were given the same treatment. You can see that the engine's been masked off. That was with um, just some a circle of tape. And the landing key was done at the same time. And it's a good idea to prime these because obviously there's brass parts involved as well as the plastic. And finally the drop tanks. You see there's some very small photo etch parts on the prop and then these are the very fine spray booms which I had damaged so you might have seen before the primer went down there was some brass tubing there just to repair that. And now my favourite Miracle Polisher, this is from Mastercasters, I've had this a very long time, probably at least 10 years and it's the perfect tool for sanding and uh, just smoothing out the primer coat. The Mr. Surfacer goes down extremely smooth anyway, but I always try and polish in between coats just to keep things as smooth as possible. It's nothing worse than any orange peel or any rough spots, especially in you know wing roots and areas like that. And now, because this is gonna be a derelict aeroplane, we're gonna to need to do some paint chipping. So, as a base coat, I'm going to use some Alclad. This is my go-to. Obviously, it's lacquer base, so it's nice and tough. And using a, quite a low air pressure, I'm just going to apply this Alclad all over the airframe. So you can see the angle of the airbrush there. I'm actually spraying in towards the area that I've already sprayed. That's going to help to uh, get a nice opaque coat. Actually, it's quite nice in natural metal, this aeroplane. And obviously not forgetting all the other bits and pieces. And after the outclad coat, it's going to have a varnish coat of VMS satin ready for the next stage. I do find that the Alclad just left on its own is just a little bit too shiny. So you can almost like wipe the paint off when you come to do the chipping. Whereas the satin varnish just gives that little bit of bite. So now for the hairspray, I decant it into the airbrush. I just let it gas off a little bit and then I'm just gonna spray it directly onto the model. You can use the chipping solutions, but I do find that their surface tension is, is just a little bit too high and it tends to bead up. So you have to put down quite a few layers. Whereas for me, the hairspray works um, and it seems to go down much nicer. So with the hairspray dry, you can dry it off with a hairdryer. And to be honest, that's what I tend to do. 
and as soon as it's dry I'm gonna put down here just a dusting of white this because the color of the airframe is going to be yellow and the white undercoat will just help to make it a little bit more vibrant as you can see it's a very light dusting really that's all you need if anything just to kill the shine of the metal and you may be able to t see just behind the the cockpit there I've re-scribed in that panel line that I managed to fill and sand out when I was dealing with the with the seams I thought at this stage well I might as well just perhaps try a little bit of a random patchy effect just in a few areas but to be honest it didn't really make any difference because I'm going to post shade anyway. So rather than speed things up and um, sort of deleting the middle part of the video, I just thought it might be useful just to show the whole process in its entirety, just so you can see how long it takes really. And you can see I'm actually holding the wing there, where I've already painted. This is, to me, a uh, flat white XF2, I think, off the top of my head. And it dries really quite quickly, hence I can uh, I can hold the wing there, having sprayed it. And that's what I normally do. I'll, I'll work out where I'm going to hold the model for most of the painting, and I'll spray that bit first. Obviously, get that to dry. So you can see on the underside there, I've masked off the, the hole with a bit of sponge. That's where the spray gear goes. And I'm just using cocktail sticks just to protect the bottom of the aeroplane. And they're just jammed into the, uh, the undercarriage location holes. You can see the big holes in the wing there, that's for the drop tanks. Okay, people, uh, rest assured that um, I will be using the fast forward button in the other sort of chapters, I suppose, for want of, a, want of a better word. But as I said, I just thought it'd be useful just so you can see how long that actually takes. It's only a small model. It doesn't take that long at all. And again, we're not after a white opaque coat as such. It really is just the base and it doesn't matter when the top color goes down and we do the chipping it's not going to sort of chip off the top coat it's going to bring the white off with it so you're not going to see any of the white when we start doing the chipping and you'll see that in a sec Right, on to the top colour now, and I'm going to be doing a derelict East German machine. And these were predominantly yellow. And this is just Tamiya flat yellow. Again, uh, I think I thinned it with alcohol though, this one. Because I didn't want it to be too strong. And I do prefer using the matte paint. Because I do find that the, the water will 
soak into the paint and then soak through to activate the hairspray better. If it's a glossy or a shiny or even a lacquer paint, it tends to repel the water. And that's not what we want. We want the water to soak through to that hairspray layer. So I'm just slowly building it up. I've hit the fast forward button. Thank goodness for that, I hear you say. Now this I do want to be an opaque coat. But we are going to do some post shading. So even though this might look too fresh for a derelict machine, we are going to sort that out. So I don't know what ratio of paint to thinner this is. To be honest, I mix it all in the colour cup. I put the thinner in first, then I'll put some paint in, then I'll test it. And then I'll either add more paint or more thinner until I've got the spray pattern that I'm after. Again, spraying at 90 degrees to, to the passing. So I'm going sort of left and right and then up and down. And that way, making sure that I've got a nice, even, opaque coat. Okay, before the fun stuff and the chipping, some post shading. So now I'm gonna do the fading. So as you can see, this is a, a lighter yellow. I've literally just added white to the color cup and a little bit more thinner. I'm going along the panel lines and also doing a random squiggly motion. I'm not gonna use the splatter masks on this one. I want more of a general kind of faded appearance. So it's more of a kind of cloudy pattern is what I'm after rather than the really tight marble effect. That's not what I'm going for. And I do find with derelict aeroplanes, they do look, they do look good if you um, highlight the panel lines. You can see there as well, I'm, I'm highlighting some of the panels and that just adds to that patchwork effect. And you see that it, it is quite subtle, but even even after all the, the oils and the filters and all that jazz, it, it's, a, it's a nice effect and, and you will notice it, definitely. Now on the fuselage, again, concentrating along the panel lines, around the detail and just picking out some of those sharp creases and then going up and down and sort of blending that sharp crease in with the cloudy faded effect. And you can see there again just along the panel lines and then kind of blending that panel line fading in a little bit with a little bit of a sort of cloudy pattern. And now some neat yellow. Well when I say neat I mean um, it's obviously thinned but it's the original base colour. And I'm just going to go in again with a cloudy pattern and then along along the panel lines again. And this can give quite a nice effect where you've got the dark line of that neat colour and then that sort of cloudy wider fade underneath. It's all about adding layers and dimensions now. Right now for the now for the fun bit and the chipping. So this is a my go-to chipping brush. It's an old, very old brush, cut down, and I'm just working the water in into the surface, and then just with a very gentle scrubbing motion, I am just waiting now for that that water to soak through the top layers of paint into the hairspray. 
it'll start to dissolve the hairspray and then what it'll do is it will lift up that top color that top coat of paint and you can see there just on the leading edge it started to go and I'm just continuing with that scrubbing motion until the paint starts to lift off now where the paint is thinner it's gonna have an easier time of it to obviously to get through the paint and lift it off and where it's thicker obviously it's gonna be more difficult so here on this model where I've got different layers of paint that can get a quite a nice effect as well and what you can do sometimes is is get the sort of chipping around the more solid paint which can leave a nice effect So you can see it's starting to go along the panel lines there, along the edge of the detail. And then when we do the uh, the corrugations, the raised bits, it is going to take that paint off. And you can see there it's starting to come off on the corrugations there on the top part. And there's the chipping coming through there. Now, it's important just to dry things off, take stock, have a look. And then if you want to go back in again, because it can be a bit of a pain if you end up taking off too much paint, because then you have to go in and uh, and do a bit of a repair job, more hairspray, more top color, and then and then go over it again. But even that, can, you can turn it into your advantage and have slightly different tones of paint to add to that sort of well-worn appearance. And you can see there again the high spots along the power lines, along the corrugations, where it's lifting the paint off those high spots. Again, that's adding a little bit of contrast between the high spots and the low spots. And it's all adding sort of layers and depth to the whole finish. So it can take a little bit of time for the hairspray to activate, but once it goes, it goes. So that's the time to, to be a little bit more gentle and to take stock, take stock, stop, look, assess, and go again if you need to. Okay, everything was sealed in again with another layer of varnish. And now it was time to splay the red parts. So again, this is just Tamiya paint. I'm assuming the uh, the ailerons were fabric. So I'm gonna do this in a, in a faded red and slowly build up the color. I did seal everything in with the varnish because when you come to mask, masking tape doesn't really like hairspray and you can peel the paint off in big sheets. So I just, before I varnish, I just leave the model hopefully overnight if I can. Then I'll put the varnish on, leave that a good two or three hours to cure before I go anywhere near it with masking tape. And I'll tend to try and detack the masking tape as well. So again, this is just um, Tamiya paint. So I ended up painting the East German markings on the tail. So the white has been masked off there. That red on the marking was a lot more intense red than the, uh, than the rest of the fin just looking at some of the reference photos I had. So that's why that's been painted separately and, and it's a lot more vibrant.
Okay, and then coming back in with some more post shading, so light and red. So I guess you could call that pink. And again, I'm just doing the sort of cloudy pattern. I've removed the nozzle cap off the airbrush just to get a much finer spray pattern. And you can see how close the airbrush is. So just be very careful that, that you don't ding the model because you'll damage your needle and damage your model. That's it, back in shot, Jamie. And as you see, I tend to sort of do one area, leave it, go to another, then come back, do a little bit more. And that way you just minimize the risk of just going that little bit too far. Okay, here's the yellow for the tailplane. Uh, not tailplane, rudder, I should say. Again, that was that was a vibrant yellow as well. So that market, I don't know whether it was a whether they put them on as decals or paint, I don't know. But they were more vibrant. Now the anti-glare panel. So I've masked off the nose ring with some flexible tape and the rest of it with normal Tamiya tape. And then in with the outclad. And then chipping fluid applied with a sponge. Now this can give you a little bit more control over some of the chipping but it's a really good way of just doing the edges of something. So switching back to black, I thought, well, I might as well finish off the tail marking at the same time as the anti-glare. As you can see, this is not pure black. It's a mixture of black, whole red and buff. then onto the cowling itself so a nice thin even coat now this has been hairsprayed as well this bit and not forgetting the cow flaps because we don't want that see-through look and then what we'll do is we'll come back in with a bit of neat black just for a bit of more sort of uh, depth of finish again. And then a quick swipe of the finger, off comes the masking fluid to reveal those chips on the edge. That gives a really nice effect. And then we can combine that with the hairspray. So back in with the soft wet brush. And then there it comes straight away. easy to go overboard now so so just be careful and that's the two types of chipping in one there okay the famous or infamous decals from Edward so rather than doing the uh, option in the kit uh, I just reversed the last two of the uh, serial letters there just to make a kind of bespoke airplane so it's not one from the kit so decals are just treated like a normal decal and actually they settle down really really well so I'm using the ammo of MIG setting solutions and these decals yeah I've heard a lot of complaints about them, but to be honest, I thought they were really, really good. Gently rolling the Q-tip over there, or cotton bud, depending on where you are, um, just to get rid of any air bubbles or whatever, and also to um, just make sure that the, the decal just sits in those corrugations, and then whack on the decal solvent over the top and that will bed in really nicely right so this is one method of removing the carrier film and this is just some enamel thinner on a cotton bud or q-tip and I'm just gently rubbing over the surface now what that'll do is that will start to dissolve the carrier film 
and it turns it into sort of this sort of gum that you can just peel away or or pick it off with tweezers as you'll see I'm doing. There we go. We'll get rid of that. But the rubbing did actually rub the ink off the high spots as you can see there on some of the lettering. Which isn't too bad on this because obviously this is a derelict aeroplane. But if you do have any decals over raised features, I, I wouldn't really recommend that method. Maybe this would be better. So with some detached masking tape, you just lift the carrier film up and then you can just pick it off with some tweezers. And if you look at that, it just, it just peels off. Awesome. Okay, here in a, in a cap, bottle cap, I'm just mixing up a sort of orangey brown colour with oils, and this is going to be the wash. It's quite a thin wash. And I'm literally going to splurge this everywhere. I'm just going to work it into all the surface detail. Don't want to miss any bits. And then what we'll do is we'll let that dry. Um, I hit it with a hairdryer. That's going to accelerate things. And then we can come in with some just some kitchen kitchen towel, and then just polish off the excess the excess wash, and it just leaves it in all the in all the detail. As you can see there, really nice effect. Under the centre of the fuselage, I just went in with some sort of neat starship filth and then worked it into the surface just because it's going to be more grubby under there. And I'll tend to do that, play with the different tones of the oil paint rather than just have, have the one colour all the way around. Now to remove it from the rest of the airframe. And I really like this stage actually. Knocking off the rudder. Terrific. And then in some of the hard to reach places I did actually use a brush and just blended it with the brush and that gave a really nice soft effect actually. So I was pleased with that, that worked well. And you see one of the flaps has fallen off as well. Destroying this thing. And now for the ore dot weathering. So the tones used here is um, some white, some yellow, and some rusty colors. And just a little bit of starship filth here and there. And then these dots, that was blended into the surface with this damp brush and the point of this is just to add another layer of fading and another layer of grime so you can see the darker tones there along the aileron hinge the rusty tones behind the slat and the lighter tones on the yellow paintwork and the and the aileron so just have a think about where you're going to put the oil paint so it's not random it's kind of well how could you describe it? it it's kind of random with thought i suppose if you like and again that brush is only damp it's not too wet we don't want to flood the surface we just want to we're using that little bit of thinner just to blend the oils into the into the paintwork and you can see there I'm, I'm regularly cleaning the brush off, trying not to contaminate the different colours. And then working in that rusty tone just behind that underside of the slat. Obviously this is not simulating rust, this is just getting a little bit of tonal variation into the paintwork. 
and then in with the dry brush just for your final blend you can see the darker tones on the sort of center of the fuselage so that gives a really nice grubby effect and you can see the, the exhaust pipes there which have been mounted in and they've been drilled out they're solid in the kit So using a little bit of thinner if there's a little bit too much oil paint there and the finger just to blend things away and that will take some of that oil paint off the high points as well to add to depth. Okay now some streaking effects and some streaking grime. So the first thing I did is I is I measured the undercarriage and then cut the cocktail sticks to the right length because we need to make sure that these streaks are perpendicular with the ground. So taking the enamel product and this and this brush, we're just gonna draw in where we want the streaks to go. A couple here at the back, just where the handle is. And then underneath the tailplane, we're just gonna bung in quite a lot actually, because that's where a lot of the filth would accumulate. And not forgetting some of the uh, some of the hinges and stuff on the flaps and ailerons. So taking a flat brush, moistened in thinner, we're just going to go over and blend in that streaking. This is actually quite tricky to try and keep vertical. And also it's quite tricky that we don't we don't blend too much of the paint away. So what I tend to do is is it takes a few passes and a few applications of the product just to build up the opacity that I want. So you can see there I've actually removed too much of the paint from the source of the 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 streaking. So you're just using the edge of the brush just to activate the paint and draw it back up again. You see some of the fading there on the on the decals. Did actually just do a little bit of gentle sanding on that just to fade those markings. So I think maybe in hindsight, I could have left the uh, that streaking stuff on a little bit longer to dry. That's why um, quite a bit of it ends up being removed but no drama we can just go in again and add some more over the top you see I've already done the tailplane there So wasn't really happy with some of that streaking. It was a little bit too, too light. So just adding a little bit more and we end up with the effect that I was after. And that'll do it for this episode. So in the next episode, we do actually do the drop tanks. I know I said that last time. We put the airframe together and we do a little bit of pigment work and we do the underside. And we finish off the project. 
So thanks very much for tuning in. And the next episode, we'll do the final reveal. So I hope you can join me then. Thank you very much and see you on the next one. Bye-bye.